Hello and welcome to this course on the fundamentals of calculus. My name is Devendra Kapadia and I work here at Wolfram Research as a kernel developer for calculus functions. But I also enjoy communicating my ideas about mathematics and mathematica to a wide range of audiences. It is a great pleasure to share my thoughts with you. Now before I go on to discuss the course topics in detail, I would like to give you an outline of this presentation. So in this talk, I will begin by giving you an overview of basic calculus operations using Mathematica. And by that I mean operations such as finding a derivative, or computing an integral, or solving a differential equation. And I hope to show you that you can do all this and much more with great ease using Mathematica. Now once the overview is done, I'll give you some details about the functionality for computing integrals and solving differential equations in Mathematica because these are typical tasks that you might want to carry out when you do calculus. And then towards the end of the talk, we'll take a trip through the resources available for the built-in calculus functions. This will help you to find information about functions for solving your particular problem in Mathematica. Okay, it's now time to give the overview of calculus and let's begin with the basic functions of calculus. So Mathematica provides functions for all the standard operations of calculus and roughly speaking the subject divides into two parts. There is the so-called continuous calculus which is what we usually call calculus at college level. But in the modern age of computers one also needs to consider the so-called discrete calculus which deals with discrete events in time. So on the continuous side if you need to find a derivative we have a function called d. If you need to compute an integral we have a function called integrate. Limits can be found using a function called limit and if ever you need to solve a differential equation then we have a function called d solve where the d stands for differential equation. And on the discrete side if you need to compute a finite or infinite sum we have a function called sum. Finite and infinite products can be computed using a function called product and difference equations can be solved using a function called R solve where the R stands for recurrence equation. Okay so some examples from continuous calculus and let's begin with derivatives. So here is an elementary function and we'd like to find the derivative of this function so you tell Mathematica find the derivative and then simplify the answer slightly using a function called together and when you do that then you get back an answer quite quickly. But of course you can go well beyond that so here is a rather difficult looking implicit equation that I came across in my own work a few years ago. So uh, there is an unknown function y of x but there are also these airy functions and their derivatives which occur in higher mathematical physics. And the question is how would one find the derivative in this case? Well, irrespective of how difficult or easy the problem is, the command for finding a derivative is just the same. Namely, you tell Mathematica, find the derivative, solve for the derivative, and then simplify the resulting expression. And when you do that, then quite quickly, you get this wonderfully simple answer. So the point is that as long as your problem has some underlying simplicity, there is a very good chance that Mathematica will find it for you. Okay, now go on to integrals. So here's an integral for which you might use integration by parts. And of course we can do it quite easily. But the second example is more interesting because in addition to the variable x, there is also a parameter a. And because the upper limit of integration is infinity, you would expect that as the value of a changes, so would the behavior of this integral. And indeed, when you run the problem in Mathematica, 
then you get back an answer which says that the result is 1 over a provided that the number a has a positive real part. Okay, now going to limits. So here is a rational sequence with leading coefficient 2 for its numerator and leading coefficient 3 for the denominator. So naturally when you find the limit in Mathematica, the answer is just 2 thirds. But now let's take up the sine function. The sine function is 1 for positive x and negative 1 for negative x. So here is a plot of the function. It's 1 to the right of 0 and negative 1 to the left of 0. And if you then give this function to limit, to find the limit as x approaches 0, you get back the answer 1. And you might wonder why, after all, that's only half the answer, so to speak. Well, we have an option called direction for limit. And if you set direction to 1, then you get the other half of the answer, namely negative 1. So given a piecewise function, you can find its limit from different directions using the direction option for limit. And finally, go on to differential equations. So here is a first order differential equation. That is the derivative term. The right hand side is sine x. And if you give it to d solve to solve, then you get back a solution. Now, the solution which you would find in a typical textbook is right over here. And the question is, why does d solve return an answer in terms of this function object? Well, the underlying design principle is that it is in this form that the solution can be verified and plotted quite easily. So the first step what I do is I plug in, that's replace all or plug in the solution into the differential equation and then I simplify the resulting expression and I get back true that says this solution is correct. And then what I do is um, I plug in the solution into the unknown function y of x. I give a particular value to the constant c1 over here. I choose a nice red plot style and a yellow background. And then quite quickly, I get this beautiful graph of the solution. So what you've done over here is to solve the differential equation. We have checked that the solution is correct. And then finally, we have found a graph, a plot for the solution. That's a complete solution to the entire problem. OK, so let's now go on to discrete calculus. And let's begin with sums. So we have a, a very nice function Mathematica called Manipulate. And you can think of Manipulate in different ways. But to me, Manipulate is a tool for doing experimental mathematics. So let's say you have a problem in symbolic computation. Then before we give it to one of our solvers, you could try and run Manipulate on your problem to try and guess what the answer might be. So let's run this Manipulate over here. And what you get back is a very familiar figure, namely Pascal's triangle. Now we can do various things to the Manipulate. For example, you can run the slider left or right to make the triangle smaller or bigger. But let's just focus on this one row over here with entries 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. And if you add them up, then you see that 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 6 is 11, 11 plus 4 is 15, and 15 plus 1 is 16. That's 2 to the power of 4. So you would guess that if you take any row of Pascal's triangle and you add all the entries in that row, then the answer would be a power of 2. And you can check that now using the sum function by summing all the binomial coefficients for a particular value of n. And you do get back 2 raised to n, as you had guessed. So using Manipulate is a very nice way of guessing your answer before you actually get it in Mathematica. I now go on to products. So if you find the product of the first n natural numbers, you of course get back n factorial. But with a slightly more difficult input, it's quite possible that the answer will contain lots of special functions. Like in this case, so you get back a polygamma function, you get back a zeta derivative, and you get back a Gleischer constant. But the point is that as long as you work within Mathematica, there is no difficulty, and you can get numerical results for this answer, just like in any other case. OK. We finally go on difference equations. So here are the difference equations a n equal to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. And the first two terms are both 1. So you, the problem is to find a sequence in which 
every term is a sum of the previous two terms and the first two terms are both 1 and if you give it to R solve to solve then quite quickly R solve says oh yes this is the Fibonacci sequence and then what you can do for example is to make a table of the first 10 values of the sequence and you see quite clearly that the first term is 1 the second term is 1 and then every other term is a sum of the previous two terms so for example this 34 is 13 plus 21 so that concludes my brief overview of calculus and I now go on to a theme which is of fundamental importance to both mathematics and Mathematica and that is symbolic integration so symbolic integration in Mathematica is done by the integrate function this is a highly sophisticated function with hundreds of pages of code behind it it is very well tested very well used and the question is what can integrate do well integrate can compute a wide variety of indefinite integrals it can compute definite integrals over finite infinite intervals it can compute multiple integrals in an arbitrary number of dimensions and for more advanced users it can also compute the integrals of so-called piecewise functions and distributions so this is one master function whose mission it is to try and compute a closed form for every integral in the world if that is at all possible so some examples for integrate and let's begin with indefinite integrals so here is a rational function it's a polynomial divided by another polynomial and if you give it to integrate to solve then the answer has two parts the first part is a rational function just like the input and the second term is a logarithmic term and that's very typical of the integrals of rational functions they have a rational part followed by one or more logarithmic parts okay so you can verify the answer by using the D function by differentiation and you get back the input so the answer seems fine but of course you can go well beyond this so here's an elliptic integral that I came across in my own work during my PhD a few years ago so uh, the term elliptic simply means that you have z to the power 4 underneath the square root sign and at that point I was using Mathematica only for doing calculus labs so I spent a few weeks learning about the theory of elliptic integrals and I found out the answer by hand it took probably around 11 pages and then uh, at that point a colleague asked me to try the answer which I had obtained and check that it was actually the same as Mathematica but I did that and in just a second I got back the same result from Mathematica now the elliptic part over here is locked up so what I do is I use the collect function to get back a much nicer form of the same result okay so in the earlier case the rational function the solution had two parts there was a rational part and a logarithmic part and now for this elliptic integral the answer is two parts the first part is an algebraic term just like the input and the second term is an elliptic term which is transcendental so we have found the answer the answer looks correct the question is is it actually correct so at this point uh, I'd like to give uh, what's perhaps the best piece of advice I can give you today and that is do check your work in Mathematica when that's at all possible so let's do it over here and you do get back the input by differentiation so the answer seems fine okay I now go to definite integrals so here's an improper integral because when x is 0 then log 0 is not defined and when x is 1 then both log x and 1 minus x are 0 that's a slightly milder problem but Mathematica has no difficulty computing the answer in this case and you get back the result whose numerical value is about negative 6.49 and then you can check the answer with n integrate which is a purely numerical integrator and you get back just the same result now the next example over here is surely beyond college calculus it's fairly non-trivial but I only take it up to point out to you that it's worth trying your integrals in Mathematica to get exact or symbolic results whenever that's possible so let's run the example over here it takes a bit of time 
but it's well worth the wait. So when we run the integral, we need to wait, but when it's done, what you get is a quite remarkable answer. In this case, it's a huge rational multiple of pi. Uh, the numeric value of the answer is about 4.55 times 10 to the negative 8 and you can check the answer with n integrate and you get back just the same result. The quiet over simply means that if any messages are generated during the n integrate evaluation then they are ignored by Mathematica. Okay, finally go on to multiple integrals. So the problem here is to find the volume of the unit ball in four dimensions. Now typically when you do multiple integration calculus, what you do is you break up your volume into simpler parts and then integrate over each part separately. But in Mathematica you can do things a little more geometrically, so what you can do is to remind yourself that the unit ball is the set of all points in four dimensions in this case, whose distance from the origin is at most one, and then what the Boole function does is to pick out just those points for you. So when you run the in an integral in Mathematica, then what you get back in just a few seconds is pi square over 2, which is the volume of the unit ball in four dimensions. The numerical value of the answer is about 4.93, and you can check the answer with n integrate, and you get back just the same result. Okay, now go on to another theme of great importance for calculus, and that is the exact solutions of differential equations. Now, exact solution differential equations in Mathematica are found using the desolve function. This is a very nice modern function. It's one which I like quite a lot because I've been looking after it for the last seven or eight years. And the question is, what can desolve do? Well, desolve can find exact solutions for ordinary differential equations, and here we can do just about anything. We can solve linear equations, nonlinear equations, single equations, system of ODs, and uh, if we can't do a particular example, there usually is a very good reason for it. We can also solve some partial differential equations, namely general first order PDs and some high order equations. And in practice, from time to time, what you have is a combination of differential equations and purely algebraic constraints. So we can solve linear constant coefficient systems of these so-called DAEs. So some examples for desolve, and let's begin with the logistic equation which appears in the study of population dynamics. So here is a differential equation and that's the initial condition. And if you go to desolve to solve, you get back a solution which has the same two parameters A and B, which also occur in the input. So what I can do is, I can give a particular value to B and several different values to A, and then I get back, in this case, four different plots of solutions. Now the nice thing is, if you use the evaluate command over here, then the different solutions, the different graphs, are colored with different colors in an aesthetically pleasing way, so you do not need to give the coloring scheme yourself. Okay, now go on to one of my favorite examples, and that is the so-called aging spring. So this differential equation over here is a model for an aging spring. And the reason why the spring is aging is because you have a negative sign over here in the exponential term, and that means that the spring constant decays as time goes by. So if I give the problem to desolve to solve, then I get back a solution in terms of Bessel functions, which also occur in the oscillations of Grums and elsewhere. And the question is, why is this a good solution for the aging spring problem? Well, the best way to see that is to actually do a plot of the solution. So let's do that now. It takes a bit of time. It's a difficult plot. But when it's done, then what you see is that the spring is nice and firm initially. And then as time goes by, it starts to age, just like the name aging spring suggests. Okay, another favorite example of mine is the so-called Kornu spiral. So the problem here is to describe a plane curve through the origin whose curvature is equal to the parameter value s at every point. What that means is you think of a curve which is flat at the origin 
and then as you go to infinity on the right it is infinitely curved eventually and the same thing happens on the left. So here are the differential equations for the problem and if you give it to D solve to solve then you get back a solution in terms of so-called Fresnel functions which occur in optics and elsewhere. And the question is why is this a good solution for the corno spiral problem? So once again the best way to see that is to do a, a parametric plot for the parameter s in this case and when I run this parametric plot then in just a short while what you see on your screen is a beautiful spiral picture. So uh, the curve is clearly flat at the origin and then as you go out to infinity on the right it becomes infinitely curved and just the same thing happens on the left as we had expected. Okay now going to partial differential equations so here is a partial differential equation it's got partial derivatives in it and if I give it to d solve to solve then I get back a solution which depends on an arbitrary function c1. What that means is I can give different expressions to C1 to get back particular solutions of this PD. So what I do is I give the function C1 an exponential expression and I get back a particular solution for the PD. Now this solution depends upon the parameter k and clearly if k is 0 then there is no y dependence in the solution. And then as k increase from 0 one would expect that both x and y will begin to play a symmetrical role in the solution. So in terms of the geometry of the problem you can think of a solution which is flat initially in one direction and then as time goes by it becomes more and more symmetrical. So let's run an animation to see that. So when you run the animation then you'll see that initially you have a flat solution and then it becomes more and more symmetrical as time goes by. So let's run the animation over here and you have a solution which is flat initially then it starts to collapse, collapses further and finally you get this beautiful Gaussian heap for the solution. And now let's look at DA's differential algebraic equations. So here is a differential equation. It's got a derivative term in it. Now that is a purely algebraic constraint. It simply says x plus y equal to 1 at any point of time and finally you have an initial condition so together they give the DAE. So DAE in this case means differential equation, algebraic constraint, initial condition. And now if I give it to D solve to solve I get back a solution for both X and Y but what I'd like to do is to plot X, plot Y and also show that X plus Y is equal to 1 at all times. So when you have uh, several plots to show on the same figure then the tooltip function is quite useful. So let's use tooltip over here to generate the required graphs and you see quite clearly from the mouse that the red graph is the graph for x, the blue is the graph for y and the dashed magenta line is x plus y. So basically x can do what it likes, y can do what it likes but at any point of time x plus y should be exactly 1 as dictated by the algebraic constraint. So tooltip is a very efficient way of showing several different graphs on the same plot. Okay, so it's now time for me to speak about the resources for calculus functions and by far the most important resource for any function in Mathematica is what is called the function page. Or the reference page. So every function in Mathematica has its own home page called a function page. This function page has definitions for the information and everything else you might need to know about the function including a collection of very well prepared examples on how to use this function in practice. So I thought that for this kind of a talk it would be nice if users have a kind of navigator available to them to show them how they can find information in Mathematica for their own problem. So I, I discussed with my very talented colleague Henry Kwong and Henry and I came up with this very nice calculus navigator which is a poster which tells you how to find information about calculus in Mathematica. 
Now, if you like me enjoy the history of mathematics, you could click on one of the mathematicians name like Isaac Newton and that will take you to Wolfram Alpha to get more information about the history of calculus or you might want to actually take up let's say a function like integrate over here and then you get back the integrate function page and if you scroll down you see there are lots of examples for this function scope applications etc which you can use to understand the subject in greater detail now I said that you have continuous calculus over here and discrete calculus over there but uh, they are of course not independent so for example if you go to the rsolve page and you scroll down to applications and you scroll down further then at some point we will actually come to the discussion of the volume of the unit ball in n dimensions so of course the area of unit circle is just pi the volume of a unit sphere is 4 over 3 pi and the remaining volumes are given recursively so this pi square over 2 is just the volume of the unit ball in four dimensions which we saw earlier while discussing integrate and continuous calculus so uh, I hope that this navigator will be of some use to you to learn about calculus in Mathematica, the history of calculus or you might want to go to one of these web pages for the demonstrations website or the math world website and learn more about mathematics itself um, or you might say that oh I really liked this talk where can I find more in that case you could click on one of the links at the bottom right and that will get you to the training pages and show you where you can register for other talks okay now some function Mathematica have even more detailed documentation and one of them is dsolve so uh, for Mathematica 5.1 I wrote this tutorial on dsolve which provides a comprehensive reference for all aspects of dsolve and in fact at that point and even today my real concern is for users who are just big with Mathematica and need some tips and techniques for how to work with dsolve so the tutorial includes a chapter on working with dsolve which is quite useful for beginning users now the question is where do you find it well uh, there is a PDF available on the web but uh, you can actually go to the dsolve function page in Mathematica so let's do that now and if you scroll down and then you go to tutorials and you click on this link over here then tucked away beneath this link is around 125 pages of very carefully prepared documentation on every aspect of dsolve and like I said early on there is a chapter on working with dsolve a user's guide which you might find useful particularly if you're a beginner in this area there is also a nice overview of ODs now um, it gives the history of various kinds of ODs so for example you learn that separate ODs were first discovered in 1691 by Leibniz and if you click on the separate word then you actually get examples for that type of ODE. So I do hope you'll find the advanced documentation quite useful for understanding dsolve in great detail. And finally I'll mention the demonstrations project because that really opens up a wide area for you and gives you access to thousands of notebooks for exploring calculus and other topics and um, you might also want to become a part of the mathematical community by contributing interesting demonstrations yourselves okay so it's now time for me to summarize and I hope you'll agree that dsolve integrate and the function Mathematica are really well equipped with techniques for solving calculus problems of all types and the fact that we can create these animations and interactive graphics should be very useful to anyone who's trying to understand calculus at a deep conceptual level and finally if you look at the documentation our websites Wolfram Alpha etc I hope you'll see that we actually have a combination a collection of excellent resources for using the built-in calculus functions in a wide range of fields so on that note I'll conclude today's course I thank you very much for listening and goodbye.